Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host and it is a beautiful Friday here in the capital city. Thank you all everyone for joining in. If this is your first time, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, as you know, I have this thing about teaching my life. I never really look, not saying that I don't look places to get knowledge, but I never really look for places to get content. I have always basically taught my life and whatever I have going on at the time, for the most part, um, and kind of wherever I'm at in my life, right? That is normally what I base it on. Sometimes, you know, I may find out some new information. I say, oh, this is interesting. Let me share this with my following. Um, but for the most part, when I come up with things, a lot of times it is me actually teaching my life at that point in time, right? So, um, when you are in a relationship and you are in, uh, you're an adult and you are extremely busy, Sometimes you have to be intentional about certain things. And one of the things you have to be intentional about if you both are busy people is making time for one another, right? So um, I want to say this was Wednesday. It was Wednesday. So on Wednesday, which is normally Wicked Wednesday for my man, meaning that he normally hangs with his friend. But this particular Wednesday, he didn't. Um, so we were able to spend time together on Wednesday, which is not our normal day that we, Wednesday is the day that we kind of set aside to do our own individual thing. But this particular Wednesday, we decided to spend a little time together before he had to go to his second job. And this is what made me think about my topic and what I've been talking about for the last few days, right? Because I want you to know where it came from. So we hadn't really seen each other since Saturday, meaning we've been seeing each other kind of coming and going. But it's a difference in seeing each other coming and going versus actually being able to sit down, look into each other's face, actually be able to experience some type of physical touch and take a moment to just enjoy each other, right? Sometimes it's hard to do that depending on just how busy you are, right? So on Wednesday when I walked in and I set all my stuff on the table and he was sitting down and I went over there by him and I actually sat in his lap and we just sat there and held each other and talked and kissed and smooched and hugged. And, and I was literally in his lap for a very long period of time. Like we stayed just like that. Um, even when one of his, uh, one of his friends came over, he told me, come back here and get back in my lap. Like, come, come back. Like, I'm going to talk to him, but you come sit back in my lap. Like, and it made me think about how for a very long time, I really had an issue with physical touch. Physical touch was not my thing. Um, and it just started to make me think, what has changed? What has changed now that physical touch is like my thing? Now, granted, I have always let me let me correct myself i had to learn to be affectionate towards my family right i've always loved my family but i didn't come from a family that was like extremely touchy touchy right my mama was not an extremely touchy person if you tried to kiss her she'd be like, woo, 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 woo. that was just kind of how she was but she would often with her words let you know that she loved you and you knew that she loved you by her actions, right? But she wasn't like a really touchy, touchy type of person, right? When I started going to church, <laughs> and I tell this story often, I remember at one point in time, I used to purposely go late because I wanted to go after they would do the part where you walk around the church and you hug everybody. You know, that's like the first 10, 15 minutes of church. And they, the people sing the little song and everybody walking around welcoming everybody, hugging each other. And at our church, we did the Love Creed and there was a song that they sang and then you walk around and you hug everybody. I would purposely go after I knew they had sung that song. I kid you not. Um, but then once I became a leader in the church, 
there was a certain obligation when you are in leadership to where you had to be at church at a certain time meaning that you had to be there like maybe 10, 15 minutes before the service started because you you working and you getting things prepared so that the service can flow like it's supposed to. Well, at this point in time, now I'm at church and when the people are walking around and hugging, I literally had to learn to, if, if, I remember at one point I would just brace myself when people would hug me, I would just brace myself. But Eventually, I started to loosen up. I started to soften up towards the public touching me and the public hugging me. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. When it comes down to my customers and even when I worked in my store, people knew not to touch me. I just, you can't just walk up to me and touch me. Like, I will extend my hand and shake your hand and all of that. But I was not an extremely huggy, touchy type of person. But church, bro church broke me up from it. Church turned me into a hugger. I was like, what is happening? Church turned me into a person that became a hugger. And I learned how to, when I learned how to love outside of my immediate family, because see, it's one thing when you love yours, right? But being under the ministry, being under the leadership of Bridget Stuyvesant, at the Ministry of Love, it taught me how to love overall. If I did not learn anything else from the Ministry of Love, I learned how to love wholeheartedly. Not only my immediate family, but I learned how to love people in general. Once I really learned how to love people in general, I became more warmer. I became uh, more of a safe space. And I started to open myself up and hug. Then we had COVID and you couldn't hug anymore, right? So I'm, I'm saying all of that because I'm trying to get you to understand who I am as a person. When I took the five love languages test years ago... I'm going to say it might have been maybe five years ago. I'm going to just say five years ago before COVID. My love language was acts of service. This was during the time in my life where I was extremely busy. Um, I'm building a business, a brand. I'm working after hours. I have three minor children who are still in the home with me. Um, I have my household to run. I have the responsibility of making sure that my husband is taken care of on the side of doing womanly stuff, you know, and I'm not just talking about intimacy. I'm talking about just being available and things like that. So when I took the love language test, um, acts of service was my number one. On Thursday, I just woke up and was like, I need to take this love language test again because yesterday felt so good. Like it felt so good. Physical touch felt so good. Right. And then from the person that um, was my partner right after my ex-husband, not, not daddy, but the person that was in between the two. I always tell him the one thing that you taught me was intimacy. It had nothing to do with sex. He taught me what true intimacy was. Um, we would get in the bed and he and I would just cuddle for hours. And when I was married, I was always the big spoon. I was always the one doing, I was just the worker in the marriage. I'm gonna be honest. I was the worker. I'm the big spoon. I'm the one that's cuddling and holding and I'm, you know, y'all know the position of the big spoon. I was never the, I was never the little spoon while I was married. The whole 23 years, I was never the little spoon. Um, so number two, cause that's what I call the person that's in between. So it's Spencer number two and daddy, right? So number two taught me intimacy, right? Um, he, he taught me, like, I remember the first time that he was like, I just want to cuddle with you. I just want to hold you. I remember telling him no. I was like, no, I do not want to cuddle because I don't think I can handle that emotionally. I think that I may all out have a goddamn nervous breakdown if you hold me because my body hadn't had gotten so used to not being touched, being that my ex was not in the home anymore. So I was like, I don't necessarily know if I'm mentally even ready to be for somebody to cuddle with me. And he was like, if you need to cry, cry.
cry. Like, whatever you need to do, if you need to let it out, let it out. Like, I'm going to be here to support you in it, right? It took me to having, I had to literally let my guard down and be vulnerable, right? And I allowed him to cuddle with me and I was the little spoon for the first time in my life. I know a lot of people like, what? I was the little spoon for the first time. And I remember the first time I just laid there like a brick. Yeah, <laughs> I was so uncomfortable. It was so awkward. I was just like, I don't know what the hell to do because I'm normally the one that's kind of in control. And he was just like, just, just lay there and, you know, we're going to watch this movie. And that's what we did. And eventually I began to relax. My body began to relax. And all we did was watch the movie and cuddle, right? I remember him just basically like saying, you know, it's, it's time for us to get some cuddling in again. What I'm trying to get you to understand is intimacy and sex are two different things. And when I say he taught intimacy, he taught intimacy, right? I started to look forward to the cuddling. I started to look forward to being the little spoon. I literally was like, I can let my guard down and enjoy this, right? So I'm saying all that to say, Wednesday, it felt so good. That physical touch felt so good to the point where it literally stayed at the front of my mind. And I was like, Sharonda, you are changing so much because I remember a point in time where this was just not your thing. Like, you would have sex. Like, in, in, in my marriage, we had a rule. Like, we never told each other no. So, it didn't matter who was in the mood or whatever. When the, when sex was presented, we had sex, you know. And if you wasn't in the mood, you will get in the mood along the way. That was just the way we operated, right? Um, With this, I'm like, man... You are literally changing. Like, I'm watching myself change. So much to the point that Thursday, when um, I wrote my... Because I normally write a love letter to my man every morning. That's just what we do. That That's our thing, right? And I told him how it felt so good just to be in his arms, just to be able to hold each other and touch each other and talk. That physical touch felt so good, right? So I said, let me take this love language test. And I took the test and lo and behold, this time physical touch was my number one. After that, it was quality time. After that, it was words of affirmation, gifts, and acts of service, which was my number one in the past, was now my number five. I was like, wow, 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 wow. Look at how life has a way of just changing you. Look at how exposure to new people in an intimate way can teach you and change you. You don't know what you like if you've never experienced it. And at this point, at 43, it's like I'm learning and knowing what it is that I actually like. I pay attention to what I enjoy. I pay attention to what makes my heart beat fast. I pay attention to what makes me giddy and smile and, and makes me just like a fucking school. Like, I pay attention to what gets me going. And physical touch, when I was answering all of those questions, um physical touch was at the top of my list another thing that i thought about was um in my past serious relationship when we walked with each other we never held hands holding hands was never anything and keep in mind i had been in this relationship since i was 17. so it's really my only relationship right only serious relationship we never held hands like we would walk and we would travel and we would do everything, but we never, ever, ever held hands, ever, right? I wasn't uh, uh, with it or against it. It was just something that I never experienced. Never, we, we just never even thought to do it. I don't know, we just didn't. Um, and even with number two, we never held hands, never held hands. 
But when I met daddy, he's going to open the door. He's going to help me out. And he is going to hold my hand. I don't care where we are going. I paid attention when we were, when we parked and we was going to the tailgate at LSU because we had to park and we parked in the Greek parking lot. And we had to walk over to the area where um, they have set aside for the Greek people, right? He put my chair on his back and, you know, we got situated and we started walking. He immediately reached for my hand and we held hands walking to the tailgate. I paid attention to that. It was another time that we went to a comedy show, but this was like real early, early on with us um, uh, being with each other. The door was like so close, but when he walked around to my side, he grabbed my hand and he held my hand. So I even learned that, you know what? This ain't nothing, say half ass bad. I actually like having my hand held. I like that feeling of protection. I like that feeling of a knowing that we're together. I, I enjoy that, right? So I'm going to urge you all, if you have not taken the five love language test, quiz or whatever you want to call it, take it. Um, I posted it up on my page on yesterday. I posted it up in my group, the ladies in my group. I have 10,000 ladies in my group. A lot of them had never heard of the, the quiz. And they were so glad that they took the quiz. And they were like, you know what? When my mate, my husband, my spouse, whoever, when they get off, I'm going to get them to take it. Because maybe if we take this, we can understand each other's needs a little more, you know, a little more better. Um, another thing that I also paid attention to, because some of the love languages overlap, right? The next on my list after physical touch was quality time, right? Um, but I realized that on Wednesday, I got a two for one because I got physical touch and I actually got quality time for a long period of time up until we had company. Um, quality time is one that's a little bit tricky and I'll probably get into that one more next week, but quality out of all of the love languages, I was just doing my research and studies show that quality time is the hardest love language here in the States. One, because we live very busy lives. We're on our phones. It's hard for us to disconnect from all of this to be able to focus on each other. And quality time re requires you to be intentional about uninterrupted time together in communication. Literally doing an activity or something together or communicating with each other. Uninterrupted, meaning no phones, no other people, no children, no anything. That's what constitutes quality time. So suppose you, okay, so we play cards on Thursdays, right? Um, that would not fall under the category of quality time. That would fall under the category of us having a hobby to do with one another. Like that would be like a hobby, right? Um, the reason why it wouldn't fall under quality time is because this is a group activity and it's other people involved and this is not anything that allows us to really pour into each other, to build each other, right? This is a hobby and something that we enjoy doing. But because there are other people involved, that's what removes it off the list is quality time, right? So suppose you go on a date and it's a double date. That's just the fun that y'all have. And that's not really considered as quality time because you got other people involved. Quality time is uninterrupted. Um... It's where you are unplugging, no phones, no other people, no babies, no uh, zoning out. Uh, some people think just because they're in a house together and they are around each other that they're spending quality time to each other. If y'all just around each other and y'all are one person on the couch watching TV, the other person sleep, that's not quality time, okay? Or if y'all are in a home together and one person is in the living room and one person is in the game room, that's not quality time. Quality time is when you're actually doing something together and you engage. And suppose it's a show that y'all like to watch, right? Because this will, this will be quality time. Uh, we recently watched Yellowstone together. It was another one that we watched, Lois and Superman. We watched that one. It's a couple of different series that over the time period that we've watched together. 
the reason why it will be considered quality time is because we're watching, we're talking, and we're engaging with one another about what it is that we're doing, right? When we went and we did the painting, the, um, the canvas and cocktails, that is quality time. That's an activity that we're doing together and we're actually talking and engaging. If you're having dinner with one another and you're sitting across from each other at a table, that is quality time, right? For example, like this weekend, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, we were supposed to have a party, but she actually postponed it. But we know we're going to spend time together this weekend uninterrupted. So we know that we'll get that quality time in because what we do on Thursday would not fall into the category of quality time. That will fall into basically us having a hobby that we enjoy doing together, right? Amongst other people, right? Um, but take that five love language quiz um see where you are today because you may actually shock yourself and i actually had somebody um that was telling me how and i and this shocked me she was like gifts was at the bottom of her list right for me gifts was not at the bottom of my list and she was like it didn't surprise her that gifts was at the bottom of her list so she was basically sharing in the group with us that Every time she got gifts, it was always because he had messed up. So she equated getting gifts with trauma. She equated getting roses with cheating, trauma, heartache, you know, things like this. So today she's no longer in that relationship when, when other people come along and they try to present her with things like roses. It's not received well because she relates it to... Uh, a hurt right or you want to buy a bag or something expensive she was like so the, the worst thing that you could do really is to try to give her gifts because for her gifts mean what have you done you had to be the messed up somewhere and I was like wow because in my marriage that was my my ex-husband's love language was to give me gifts he would uh, I, I was never short of gifts ever like he always gave and gave great gifts great great gifts but when i took that test gifts is literally right above acts of service for me and it's not that i don't enjoy receiving them right but i enjoy physical touch quality time and words of affirmation the top three i enjoy that so much more i enjoy you speaking life into me um and i enjoy you being kind to me and positive things, right? So the thing is that you can give all the gifts in the world, right? But just like that woman said, if you don't know how to treat me and, and um, I got to deal with trauma and all of these things triggering me from just dealing with you, I don't want no gifts, right? So certain things go a long ways for some than others. And for me, that physical touch, that quality time, and words of affirmation gonna always be at the top. Gonna always be at the top. Always. Especially, you know, with somebody that I'm dealing with in a romantic type of way. That's what's gonna get me going um, more than anything. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm gonna appreciate the gifts. I'm gonna appreciate the acts of service because I like people to do nice things for me. But when it comes down to me being fulfilled, those other things at the top. So, you take that love language quiz. Y'all let me know how it worked out for you. And I encourage you to maybe take it every couple of years or so. Uh, because what I, like I told um, the girl Ashley at Beehive, and she does paparazzi too. And y'all see my paparazzi career, that shit lasted as long as Jones stay normal. It ain't last, it ain't last long at all. I told her, like, my, my thing is sexual health and wellness. Like, I love to wear jewelry, but not sell it. Um, but, you know, she has a small baby now, so acts of service is at the top of her list right now. And physical touch is literally at the bottom of her list. And she said uh, her husband did it, and physical touch is at the top of his list, and acts of service is at the bottom. I was like, wow, 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 wow. So I think it's awesome if you, if, you know, take it together as a couple so that you can know how to meet each other's needs, right? All right, so um, the next set of baskets that I'm going to be making is going to be um, pink kink, right? It's going to be pink kink. 
everything that I'm going to be making from now on will be pink and we will be preparing for Breast Cancer Awareness Month uh, next month. In this particular basket, it is $100. As you can see, this one cannot be shipped because it has a bottle of wine in it. But this one has the Wendy Williams Anal Training Kit. It has the Adam and Eve Do a Pleasure vibe. It has the gripper, which is a stroker for you to be able to jack. This is a couple's basket, by the way, for you to be able to jack him off with. It has sex dice. It has oral sex uh, candy, the BJ Blast. It has pussy liquor, a frisky finger, which is a finger vibe that lights up. And then it has the bath bomb, the sexy surprise bath bomb with the waterproof bullet in the bath bomb. This basket is going for $100. It is available for Toy Dash today. Um, I have a very busy weekend ahead. Tonight I have a bachelorette party um, with Boy Wonder and Missy C is going to be on a party bus with the bride and I just don't even know what I, I'm just looking forward with, to an awesome night because anything dealing with Missy C, it's going to be an awesome night. That's all I can say y'all. Um, again, uh, shop on the website. Your orders are, you know, greatly appreciated. Um, and book your party because that's one thing that I'm constantly getting. Are you still booking parties? Yes, I'm still booking parties. I'm still hosting parties. I'm still coming out to you. Yes, I am. You just have to book it. Um, right now, my next available date on discount is September 30th because today is September 15th. It was already booked. Um, September 30th, it is available for $100 in the Baton Rouge area only. And you can do the good sex class where I teach you squirting, riding, and oral sex, or you can do a traditional fun party. And that will include your fun party, your games, and your prizes. Either either option is $100 if you're booking on September 30th. You all enjoy the rest of your day. This video went way, way longer than I thought it would, but it's some good information on this video. You all be blessed, enjoy your weekend.